Let's talk about species concepts. There are four main types. The first is the biological species concept. The second is the morphological species concept. The third is the ecological species concept. And the fourth is the phylogenetic species concept. So let's start with the first one, the biological species concept. Take a look at these two photos. On the right, we have photos of two orangutans, and on the left, we have an orangutan with a dog. Let's first define what the biological species concept says. This concept says that a species is a group of members who can interbreed and produce viable fertile offspring. But if they breed with members of other groups, they do not produce viable fertile offspring. So the key phrase here is viable and fertile. So this concept tells us that members of a biological species must be reproductively compatible. Now, if we take a look at this photo here, these two orangutans are reproductively compatible, so they do belong to the same species. However, in the photo on the left, we have a dog and an orangutan, and there are many things that keep these two members of different groups from interbreeding, but if they did mate, they would not be able to produce viable and fertile offspring. Therefore, these two remain distinct biological species. And this is true even if they live together. But what are the pros and cons of the biological species concept? Well, one pro is that the concept suggests that speciation occurs due to reproductive isolation. So it gives us a reasoning for speciation. But some cons are that it's inapplicable to asexual organisms or organisms that are already extinct. Because how can you determine if an asexual organism can produce a viable fertile offspring with another member of a different group when asexual organisms reproduce by themselves. In the same way, we can't determine the reproductive compatibility of an extinct species with another organism. Another con to the biological species concept is that typically we say that different species do not have gene flow between them, but there are some species that do have gene flow but they are ecologically and morphologically different. So we consider them different species even though they have gene flow between them. Now let's take a look at the morphological species concept. On the right, we have two photos. We have a photo of a western meadowlark and an eastern meadowlark. And as you can tell, they look quite similar. They seem to have similar colors and feather types. But let's first define the morphological species concept. This concept suggests that a species is a group of members of the same body shape or features. So basically, a species is a group of individuals that look the same. And one pro of this is that it can apply to both asexual and sexual organisms. So it's very applicable. But one con is that it can be misleading. And this is because of something like convergent evolution where two different species can appear to be similar because of similar environmental pressures, but not because they are of the same species. So members of different species can appear to be similar. 
Another con is that this concept can be subjective because maybe one researcher believes that a certain feature distinguishes a species whereas another researcher looks at these organisms in a different point of view. Let's take, for example, these two birds on the right, the western and the eastern meadowlark. They appear to be similar, but that's misleading, because just because they appear similar due to their similar colors and body shapes, they are actually of different species. Now let's take a look at the ecological species concept. This concept states that members of the same species occupy the same ecological niches. So the way that they interact with abiotic, which are non-living, and biotic, or living parts of their environment, are very similar. Now also remember that a niche can be the soil type that a plant prefers, or maybe their ability to tolerate cold climates, or perhaps the elevation that they survive best at. So now looking at the bottom left corner, we see these trees, and let's suppose that all of these trees live in the same soil type they are all unable to tolerate rocky landscapes. Perhaps they prefer lower elevation and that's where they survive best. And maybe they get lots of sun. But then let's look at these trees on the right at higher elevation. They like rocky landscapes. They prefer higher elevation, but they get less sun. Now compare these niches. These are two kinds of ecological niches. And let's suppose that both of these kinds of trees meet in the middle, and that is where they interbreed. So occasionally, these two species that occupy different niches do interbreed. But the key idea here is that even if there's gene flow between these two types of species of trees, they are considered different species of trees because they occupy different ecological niches. So the, the trees on the bottom left prefer not rocky landscape, they prefer lower elevation, they prefer lots of sun, whereas the trees on the right prefer a rocky landscape, higher elevation, and less sun. Now let's take a look at pros and cons. One pro of the ecological species concept is that unlike the biological species concept, this concept is applicable to asexual and sexual organisms. Another pro is that it highlights the function of disruptive natural selection in different environments. So for example, let's take a look at this graph which shows how disruptive selection affects the fitness of organisms in a certain environment. Notice how it chooses extremes. So as in this example, there can be cases with or where organisms live in a similar geographic area, but because they choose different habitats and niches, the species diverge and separate so that there is no gene flow. But one con of the ecological species concept is that it doesn't really apply to enigmatic species. And enigmatic species are those that are still a mystery to researchers. So scientists and biologists don't know everything about their ecological niches. 
And because of that, there are a lot of organisms that we still need to understand and we, to, we need to learn about how they interact with the non-living and living parts of their environment. Therefore, it becomes challenging to apply the ecological species concept to these organisms to, determ to determine which groups they're members of. And finally, let's talk about the phylogenetic species concept. This concept suggests that a species is a group of organisms who share a common ancestor. And if you took a look at a phylogenetic tree, then a species would form one branch on the phylogenetic tree. So if we take a look at the photo on the left, we'll notice that this photo shows us several different species, but let's choose this common ancestor. We see that it splits or diverges into these two species, but each branch of the tree forms one species. So from this common ancestor, the branch forms species four, but here it, it branches into species five. Now, if we take a look at this tree over here, we notice that there are three species of elephants and each species has multiple populations. But if we look at the common ancestor, we'll notice that it branches off into one specific species. So we can use these phylogenetic trees to basically trace the history of a species and determine which groups are distinct from other groups. Now, one pro of the phylogenetic species concept is that biologists use both morphological and molecular data to create these phylogenetic trees. One con is that it's difficult to determine the degree of difference that is needed between two different species in order for them to be separate species. So again, I like to think of phylogenetic as phylogenetic trees. I really hope this video helped, and if it did, please like, comment, share, and subscribe, and please send me any other video requests you have. Thank you.